and Apolina Luna's comments on Attorney General Merrick Garland touch on the core principles of justice, accountability, and the balance of power within our government. Good morning, everyone. We are here today because of the double standard that exists within the justice system. As you know, on February 27th, the Oversight Committee, as well as House Judiciary, had sent a subpoena to Attorney General Garland, of which we received no response. And after referring him for criminal contempt, within 48 hours or less, the Department of Justice refused to prosecute. Inherent contempt is clearly within our Article I authorities, and Congress does have the power to investigate um, all legislative powers. Investigations are part of our legislative process, and people that interfere with these processes should be held accountable. Inherent contempt was first used in 1795, and this was further upheld in a Supreme Court decision in 1927 in McGrain versus Doherty that stated that Congress does indeed have this authority. It's important to note that when an individual is called before, uh, before courts across the country, they appear. Why should the attorney general, who is supposed to be head of all law enforcement authorities, any different? Garland, uh, Garland still has time to comply with this request. We are asking that he bring the tapes to the House and let us listen to them. But in the event that he does not, we will press forward with calling the privilege motion on inherent contempt to the floor on Friday morning. It is also important to note that if we as a Congress do not have the ability to enforce our investigative ability, that we are essentially going to be ignored and undercut and essentially handicapped by all other branches, which would make us not a co-equal branch of government. After me, I have Dan Crenshaw speaking that would like to address this issue, but I would appreciate that the press report on this accurately in that Congress, again, does have the authority to do this, that the attorney general is not above the law. And ultimately, we will be pressing forward with this. Um, this is something that, again, would enable the Speaker of the House to order the sergeant at arms to take into custody the attorney general if he fails to comply with our request. She underscores the importance of accountability and the rule of law. It's likely you resonate with Luna's belief that no one, not even the Minister of Justice, is above the law. Holding public officials accountable is crucial for maintaining public trust in our judicial system and ensuring that all government agencies operate within legal boundaries. Her remarks are a clarion call for sincerity and responsibility in the legislative process. Luna emphasizes the need for Congress to assert its authority and responsibility in investigating and holding individuals accountable to preserve the integrity of our democratic governance. We must consider the impact of perceived double standards within the judicial system on the public's morale. The notion that some individuals are above the law fosters frustration, distrust, and cynicism toward the government. Luna's demands for accountability resonate deeply with the public's yearning for justice and transparency, aiming to bolster confidence and empowerment within the legislative process. The public's reaction to Luna's remarks and their potential impact on the political landscape cannot be overlooked. Merrick Garland's call to comply with the subpoena reflects a broader demand for transparency and accountability in government. Criticisms of Congress's effectiveness in enforcing its investigative powers and the potential consequences for democratic governance, if these efforts are seen as partisan or inefficient, highlight the urgency of these issues.